We're finally ready to populate the velocity and position columns in our worksheet, and this is where we're going to use the explicit finite difference equations that we developed in class. So let's start with the velocity, and we should remember that the new velocity at any time step is equal to the previous velocity plus the previous acceleration times delta t. So we will enter a formula here that gives us that expression so equals the previous velocity which is found here in cell H4 plus the previous acceleration from cell G4 times delta T that's our DT underscore 1 so now we have a value for the velocity after the first time step now let's do the same thing for position so the new position at any time step is equal to the previous position plus the previous velocity times delta t so equals previous position here in i4 plus the previous velocity from h4 times delta t dt underscore one and we now have a value for the position after we've taken one time step now that we have those formulas entered we can simply copy and paste them down for the remaining times and step numbers and lastly we'll take a look and see what our approximated position values are so our initial position was 0.8 meters after one time step of 0.2 seconds our position according to our EFD approximation is still 0.8 meters after we take another time step so now the time is 0.4 seconds we're at 0.4 meters so we're halfway to the top of the ice cream sundae and if we take yet another step to get to 0.6 seconds our position is minus 0.4 meters meaning that we've overshot the top of the ice cream sundae by 0.4 meters so remember that we were trying to find the time value where the position was equal to zero and you can see that that's going to happen somewhere between a time of 0.4 seconds and a time of 0.6 seconds so we want to keep track of that for some of the things we're going to do next so let's go back over here in our worksheet and enter a value of 0.5 seconds for the final time meaning the time the cherry lands on top of the ice cream sundae for our first time step which was 0.2 seconds so I'll go ahead and type in a 0.5 seconds into that cell now we'd like to take a look at the effect of the size of the time step on the approximation that we get for the position using the EFD technique so let's cut our time step in half and run through these calculations again and see how we do so over here in the parameter section of the worksheet I am going to enter a formula in my cell for the second time step that's equal to the first time step divided by 2 so of course that gives me a time step of 0.1 seconds and then we're going to move over to our time step 2 section of our worksheet and enter some things in there so let me hide our time step one section okay here's our time step two section I've already populated the step number column and the initial values for time um, acceleration velocity and position and you can see that I did that by referring to our name cells and we can again populate our time column this time let's uh, multiply the step number times delta t and now of course it's dt underscore 2 that we're using and that gives us a time of 0.1 seconds after one step so that's good and then let's copy and paste that down into the rest of our columns alright so we've generated our times um, for the acceleration again since that acceleration is constant we can copy our minus g down for all the times and again now we're ready to put in formulas to generate the new velocity and position values so for velocity again we're gonna have equals the previous velocity plus the previous acceleration times delta t and again I need to be careful to use dt underscore 2 and for the position we have the previous position plus the previous velocity times our delta t okay great and once those formulas are in we can grab that and paste 
to populate the rest of the times, and we can now take a look at the position values that we approximated with this smaller time step. Okay, let's take a look at the position values that we generated using a time step of 0.1 seconds. Our initial position is 0.8 meters, of course, and after one time step, our approximation tells us that we're still at 0.8 meters. After two time steps, we're at 0.7 meters, and then 0.5 meters, 0.2 meters, and when we get to the fifth time step, or in other words, a time of 0.5 seconds, our position value has gone negative. It's negative 0.2 meters, which means, again, we've overshot the top of the ice cream sundae. And if we want to figure out what at what time we actually hit the top of the sundae, we have to extrapolate between these two values. So somewhere between 0.4 seconds and 0.5 seconds, the cherry lands on the ice cream sundae. So let's um, approximate that as 0.5 seconds and type that value in over here where we're keeping track. So again, um, the final time, the time when the cherry lands on the ice cream sundae using our initial delta T value of 0.2 seconds was 0.5 seconds. And when we used our smaller delta T value of 0.1 seconds, we end up with an approximate time of 0.45 seconds.